and this session where we will consider eSports sensors. Before we start, please make sure you have checked out the course sheet for this session. This session will reflect on the experience of architectural design technology students at Wrexham Glyndwr University who, as part of the Erasmus Plus project this MOOC is a result of, have engaged in researching and designing eSports centres. Since 2018, there have been two groups of students working on a variation of the project, each individual student designing an eSports centre, with a third group currently developing a final variation. The first group developed a brand new eSports centre based in Wrexham, North Wales, on a corner site off the major road into the town centre. This site is the southern tip of the block the university campus sits on, next to the football stadium it shares the block with. You can see the corner site, including a redundant car showroom, in the foreground of the photo on the course sheet and the site the students used outlined in red on the plan. With the site being on the main road into the town centre, right next to a mainland train station in the bottom left of the photo, this project was an opportunity to develop an eSports centre that was also a landmark building. From my perspective, a site perfect for the study of eSports centres now to make them inclusive spaces to prominently promote gaming and eSports to a wider public. All architectural design projects need a clear brief to establish what is required of the design by the client. For this project, the students had more than 25 clients, me as their tutor and the academics and students participating in the Erasmus Plus project from France, Spain and Finland. The first group of students worked with their counterparts on long discussions and workshops related to all aspects of the Erasmus Plus project, with a particular focus on their suggested area of expertise, optimizing the layout of an eSports center. The photo on the course sheet shows the group in Finland, along with the notes related to optimization, as well as some of the work on the possible characteristics of eSports participants from our time in France. To aid the students, the eSports project was adopted as a graded assignment task for their major second year project. The course runs for three years. This allowed for the creation of a three-part brief. Adapting the original second year assignment to design a community building by assigning the function of that building to eSports as informed by the Erasmus Plus project. A focus of all architectural design technology projects is to ensure a building is inclusive with regards to access and usability, as well as being designed and operated with regards to considerations of climate change and climate resilience. This remained a part of the eSports project, particularly as inclusion is a key factor of the Erasmus Plus project. Finally, as this would be one of the first purpose-built eSports centres in Wales, and until 2000, the United Kingdom, this needed to be an event building. In the sense it celebrated in its form an eSports aesthetic, how we assess its beauty, as well as being a landmark building as described earlier because of its prominent position in the town. What counts as an event landmark building? What is an eSports aesthetic? Do you remember the duck rabbit from last week? You may recall when we were talking about inclusion last week, I had you closing your eyes in imagining trees, as well as trying to decide if a drawing was of a duck or a rabbit or simultaneously both. One of our conclusions for that discussion was how open to interpretation language is within a common framework, we all know what a tree is, how it is therefore subjective, relying on our understanding and experience. You will not be surprised to realize this extends to architectural design and the aesthetic of the building resulting from that process. If aesthetic is about perceptions of beauty, then it too is open to individual perception. What does this mean for our eSports Centre in Wrexham? It means no project is ever going to come up with a perfect aesthetic design for an eSports Centre. And arguably, even when we are examining the spatial specifications of the gaming space itself, there will always be variation between the requirements of one eSports athlete, for example, and another. Take the proposal for the Fusion Arena, a purpose-built esports arena which, once restrictions around COVID-19 are lifted and the building work can resume, should be the largest centre in the Western Hemisphere. Designed by Populous for construction in Philadelphia and the United States, 
It has been conceived by the designers based on their existing work with traditional sports venues, including Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York, for the baseball team of the same name. This is a significant development as it recognizes the design of an eSports center as a direct relation to the design of any other sporting venue, validating architecturally the recognition of eSports as a sport. The design is clearly new in form and can be seen to draw some influence from both console design and games. However, remember the duck rabbit. These are just my words and opinions on the eSports aesthetic of this particular building. And while I have an academic and a professional background in architectural design, perhaps the better question for you is, do you like it? Before we move on to the somewhat safer objective ground of what an eSports center should contain and how student designs address this, let me tell you about a peculiarly British notion, the Marmite effect. Marmite is a food spread created as a byproduct of beer brewing. It has a very particular taste, which tends to divide people who love it and people who hate it. There is rarely anyone who just likes it. I personally hate Marmite. This is often a term we use in the UK when discussing controversial subjects of taste, including buildings, often those falling under the label of event landmark buildings. Some of our Erasmus Plus partners should perhaps breathe a sigh of relief they were unable to come to Wrexham in 2020, as my colleague once explained the Marmite effect to two Catalonian students by feeding them Marmite on a cracker. This is a proposal for the Atari Hotel in Las Vegas, United States. Released in 2020, this is a design inspired by the gaming and console company Atari and loosely based on their logo. The designers, Gensler State, we assembled a multidisciplinary design team with experts from hospitality to branding, sports and digital experience design to develop a dynamic brand that is unmatched in the hospitality industry. It will certainly be an event landmark building and being so closely linked to a logo, it will also spark some strong opinions, making it a clear candidate for consideration as a Marmite building. Is this a drawback to eSports centres if they are seen as extravagant, almost alien structures? If I can offer a professional opinion, then I would say no. From my own personal experience, when I have visited cities like Macau and Dubai, both featuring buildings I personally do not like because of their approach to their event landmark status, they remained a significant attraction to me as notable buildings to photograph because I dislike them as much as those in those cities that I did like. While not all eSports centers should strive to be like the proposed Fusion Arena and Atari Hotel, in the promotion of eSports, such buildings arguably do no harm in drawing people to them. The first group of students set out to design an eSports center as a self-contained new build, seeking to create on the site a facility meeting all the expectations of the brief, including those arising from engagement with this feedback from Erasmus Plus events in Cannes, France and Kayani, Finland. A summary slide of some of the data they used is shown in the course sheet. The buildings designed by the students varied in scale and functions, often attempting to fit every conceivable operation and facility into the same site. Common issues were a conflict in the design between figuring out what the building was, a community centre functioning as an esports venue, or an esports centre with a community centre element. Few managed to create the goal, an esports centre with a public facing aspect to encourage people new to gaming and amateurs alongside the facilities needed to host esports competition, training and analytics. Many landed somewhere between a physical sports space, a venue for role-playing activities, and an arcade without quite defining a clear identity. Many designed buildings focused almost solely on the arena aspect, at the expense of some of the aspects of engagement set out in the brief. The first set of designs from 2019 gave rise to a useful discussion relating to the form and the function of an esports centre. And this first group undertook a reflective feedback process at the conclusion of their academic year. This feedback was analysed and presented to the second group of students and further discussed at the next Erasmus Plus event in Murcia, Spain, at the end of 2019. 
This shifted the parameters of the design brief for the next set of eSports centers designed in Wrexham. Using the same data, as well as the extensive feedback from the 2019 students, the 2020 students approached the project, still to be designed on the same site in Wrexham, with an amended aspect to the brief detailed earlier. At this event in Spain, I presented an option to the students and our Erasmus Plus partners related to how we could get a different set of feedback and analysis by amending the brief to create, again, a new build eSports center, but in this instance, integrated into the university campus it shares a block with. This is perhaps best summarized in the slide from the event on the course sheet. The 2020 students were to take into consideration the functioning spaces available on campus, including several large lecturing and theater spaces. One in particular is used as one of the town's main music and performance spaces. The extensive sports and sports science facilities, the computing and creative technologies facilities, including an award-winning gaming development department. This amendment to the brief allowed the 2020 students to integrate the designs with local facilities and arguably created a set of esports centers that functioned better and became an enhancement of those existing facilities. It made the esports centers part of a community of buildings and functions and therefore allowed for a greater level of openness and engagement with encouraging participation from people new to gaming and amateurs. As the next image on the course sheet from one of the design projects shows, equal thought was given to the design of the public spaces as was provided uh, for the professional and where it is necessary private spaces dedicated to esports. While in Mauricia, students also engaged in a practical exercise of using tape to try and set out various gaming spaces where spatial consideration was given to uh, the esports athletes, the equipment, the support team, as well as spectators. From these exercises and further research, including the ergonomics of the furniture uh, and equipment often used in such settings, students were able to produce designs reflective of the specific needs of gamers and esports athletes. This then allows them to examine further considerations around ensuring these spaces were also accessible and functional for people with specialized needs. For example, for those living with autism, as evidenced in the next image on the course sheet. The 2021 eSports Centre project. The 2020 students have recently engaged in the same feedback process as their 2019 counterparts, and the new students will be picking up the next version of the project from them. To add to the development of the project, the 2021 students will be using an existing building on the campus, a large functioning sports centre, as a site for their project. Like their predecessors, they will be designing an eSports centre for people new to gaming and amateurs, as well as for eSports athletes. And like the 2020 students, they will integrate this with the facilities available to them. Their added considerations will be whether it is possible to successfully adapt an existing building into a functioning eSports centre. What requirements will there be to expand the existing building upwards or out from its current form to accommodate this. How the design can maximize the benefits to sustainable design, in the reuse of an existing building and the repurposing, for example, of excess heat from cooling of computer servers for other use such as warming water. The students are only at the start of this project and I will be happy to share the findings from this final version of the eSports Center development, as well as the detailed feedback from the 2019 and the 2020 projects on request. Conclusions moving forward. Moving forward, the projects so far have suggested where a new build eSports centre is proposed, the design must take into consideration how it attracts professional eSports athletes and participants, how it also attracts people new to gaming and amateurs, how the public gaming professional and support facilities meet spatial expectations and are also to design to be inclusive for all participants regardless of any physical or physiological differences. Where a locally integrated new build sports centre or an adaptation of an existing building is proposed, the design must also take into consideration all of the points detailed above. Ensure any reliance on neighbouring or local facilities also follows the points detailed above, as the successful integration of esports facilities with existing sports, venues and game provision, for example, will aid in embedding esports as a valued community facility. 
For all versions of these projects, eSports centers will always be consumers of significant amounts of power. Wherever possible, such facilities should seek to maximize power generation through renewable means, such as solar panels, and seek in other systems such as heat recovery, water harvesting, and the use of light emitting diodes, lighting, to be as efficient as possible. Thank you for listening.